chicken wajillo. This is a great chili to use, and it's a really simple dish. Basically, you just throw everything in the, the pan. Half a cup of water, I've got some white onion. I'm using uh, some fire-roasted tomatoes because they have a lot more flavor. And that than... smoky flavor, yeah. Yeah, because that's another thing that's very common in Mexican cuisine, is you want to char, char your vegetables. Char. And so you get that really beautiful flavor. You just take all of your... Especially with the dried chilies, right? Plays it just picks off up of the... it. so beautiful. Yeah, and you can actually toast these as well. To me, it's easier just to kind of... Throw Throw them in there, get some heat on. Exactly. I've got some beautiful Mexican oregano, which is a little bit different than Italian. But use it's what you bigger got. Bigger flavor. Yeah. Lots of salt, because we've got a lot of chicken and a lot of veg here. Just throw mm -hmm. that in. And then I'm going to nestle my chicken in here. And you can use whatever part of the chicken you want. But what I like to do when I'm making this dish is I use a skin on bone in, because that's sort of your insurance policy that you're not going to overcook right. it. It's going to stay really tender and juicy. And we're just going to throw this in here. And Beautiful. That's, that's it. You just like cover it. It's and, so easy. Yeah. Let that so come out. easy. And I actually have a recipe on your site that's actually even easier, which is the rotisserie chicken version. Oh, he just sped that up for you by a lot. <laughs> well, we were that's talking about very easy. clever of you. Show <laughs> off. But I want to talk a little bit about like how to shop for chilies because I think that that's, yeah, that's another that's part. That's a great tip for people because. You know, they're, that's really something we don't discuss, mainstream conversation for home cooks in, yeah. in the U.S., right? And I think most grocery stores carry Wajio chilies. Usually, the most common types you're going to see are ancho, Wajio, sometimes pasilla, chili de arbol. Those are very, very spicy. But mm -hmm. what you want to look for is you want to look for a chili that's really soft. Mm -hmm. To me, these are like dried fruit. Like, you know, they're like raisins or right. apricots. They should be soft. They should and be supple. fruity. Yeah, and they should have a really nice you know, chili smell. Um, if you find a chili like this, that is a little crunchy and crumbly, it's old, it's not- It's gonna... been sitting around for a long time. Yeah, I mean, in a pinch, if you can't find anything else, obviously use that, but it's gonna be better if you find something that's really, really soft. More supple. Right? Yeah, exactly. I know you completed, right, a, a book. Yeah. Look at how vibrant that color is. Now, yeah. do you have a guide to chilies in the book as well? I do, I do. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so the, like the most common types are uh, used in Mexico, but then also the common types that you can find in the U.S. So this cooks for about 30, 40 minutes, depending gotcha. on the size of your chicken. And this is what it looks like. Gorgeous. And your chicken is going to be perfectly cooked. Um, the skin will start to come off, and you can see... These chilies are really, really soft now, and that's what you want. And so we're just gonna pull these out. He kind of brought them back to life, you know what I mean? Exactly. And they're gonna be even better now. Right? Yes, yeah. yes. And they've like, all those flavors have mingled, the tomato, the spices, the onions, they're all just in there. And then you take this, and you dump it in the blender. And you puree it, and that's what you've got down here waiting for you. Right, right. So I always start off on low. So this is actually still pretty warm. Make sure that you put a... Oh, yeah, he's still screaming hot, actually. Yeah, so you put a, a towel over the top so you don't, like, you know, splatter. J-I-C, just exactly. in case. Exactly, okay. I always start off slow and... Okay. And then just gradually increase the speed until everything is smooth. That's a great tip. Yeah. And so the consistency you want is like a barbecue sauce or a marinara because we want to coat the chicken. Look, Look at how beautiful. That. Oh my God. So good. Oh. And the other great thing about this recipe is if like you overcooked your chicken or your chicken is dry, oh, if you have a rotisserie chicken, all that. exactly. It's going to soak it all up. It's going to be super delicious. So these beans are actually my dad's recipe. He makes the best. Oh, beans. that's so oh, sweet. Did yes. you cook a lot with your dad in the kitchen? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's like, beautiful. Yeah. I love, I mean, they're very, very porky. So you got to love pork to, to like yes. his beans, but I mean, who doesn't? Um, and my so that, husband's actually favorite four letter word is pork. I mean, I love your husband. I want to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> He'd love you, too, if you bring him some mezcal. <laughs> Done. I'll be here next week. Oh, it's gorgeous. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little bit. And a little uh, pico. A little pico on there. Uh, he's got a little pico de gallo. He's got some, got some cilantro, the white onions. Some the cotija. Cotija. And a squeeze of lime. And lime. Oh, beautiful.